friends, welcome hip cats and groovy chicks. Welcome back to the Jazz Ranch. You know, it's Christmas time. And you know, people ask me, why do I always wear these dark glasses or these shades? You know, what, why, what's the reason? Well, you know, partially it's because I'm shy around cameras, but also I think I look better in shades or I look younger in, in shades. So anyway, I'll take them off and you can tell me what you think. You can decide and tell me and I don't care. But anyway, I have some Christmas gift suggestions for you from certain people in your life. And these come from Oren Arnold. He said this. These are gifts now. To your enemy, give forgiveness. To an opponent, give tolerance. To a friend, give your heart. To a customer, give service. To all, give charity. And to every child, give a good example. And to yourself, give self-respect. So I like those. Those are good. So now here we go with a song for Christmas, and it's called O Come Emmanuel. And this is my inter interpretation. I'm using a backing track. So here we go now with a great song for Christmas and my interpretation. Now I want to cover two things on this video, the concept of the pedal tone 
and also how to integrate your sound with a backing track and that's something I'm learning now about and I want to show you some things about that and help you out with that as well now the first concept the pedal tone just means that it's a bass note that is being sustained over a passage of music like you know maybe four bars or eight bars or whatever of music you know example would be like if you played an introduction of a song and you played uh, say it's in B flat and you played the uh, the pedal tone would be the five and you play something like this The chords in the right hand now are a B flat major 9 to a, a G7 flat 9 to a C minor 7 or C minor 9 to an F7 altered flat 9. So I'm playing different chords in, in the, uh, I'm playing a chord progression like this. I put the bass notes in, but I play the pedal tone, you see. It creates a certain element of suspense and also um, anticipation. You know, you're anticipating something to happen, and it's a very interesting thing to do in music. It, it, it's really sort of stops the forward momentum of the music in the middle of a piece, and it also creates drama to get to the next section, which is having forward motion. You know, so. An example might be in um, classical mu music, I would take uh, the Pathetique Symphony by Tchaikovsky. Um, he plays this at the beginning, or the theme, you know, the central theme is like this. Now, if you harmonize that, it's, it's really B flat to B, or D flat diminished could be harmonized like that, but I'm just going to put the B-flat pedal through the whole passage. Or even have... See that? You see that? It sits on that harmony, then moves now. beautiful that way than if you just played roots on all those chords that were happening there. That pedal tone gives it a certain element of beauty and all musicians and composers have used that. Another example would be a Miles Davis arrangement of um, All of You by Cole Porter on his recording. It's an E flat, he uses the five pedal tone, B flat pedal tone like this. doing is a really F minor 7 to E flat back to, back to F minor 7 flat 5 actually B flat sus B flat 7 then it moves it moves harmonically so that that pedal tone creates drama and suspense and contrast Let's it sit in the space, its own space. And then it moves. Now it starts to move. See, it's a nice contrast to have those two elements. The pedal tone is a beautiful thing to use. I'm going to show you how I use it now on the song O Come Emmanuel. Now, explaining how I use the pedal tone on O Come Emmanuel, it's an E minor. So it's an E minor, natural minor scale, which is relative to G major, so it has one sharp. But on the vamp, I use E minor to F sharp minor, not half diminished. So I use F sharp minor, so I have that C sharp in there. I just prefer that sound on this one. It's sort of like a vamp that you would hear on uh, My Favorite Things by John Coltrane, but the same concept, but now I'm using the pedal tone through this passage which has actually chords moving like this. E minor, A minor. One measure then goes to G. A minor, E minor, then A minor, E minor, then it goes to D. So I'm 
through that whole passage of 10 measures I'm using an E pedal like this. Gives it a certain feeling, a sense of drama, I guess, you, the suspension you're holding. It's suspenseful because you're not, you know, going anywhere. And then it, and then it resolves there to the, the D, and then I stay on the D as a pedal tone. And then it resolves to the, the G major, relative major there, with a sus, and then a G. And then it moves to D, and then this is the next section of, and now it's moving. So you have that section which is more ethereal, which, which has the suspensions and the pedal tones, and then you have this section that is more rhythmic and, and more moving, forward moving. You see, so the pedal tone sort of keeps it in a, a sense of suspension in which, in which you're like in this one space, you're in this one place that is very ethereal. And then it moves and, ha and it has movement and forward motion, you see. So those two contrasts are very interesting and extraordinary and they're used a lot in music for that particular effect. So now I had this track and you know they have these styles on band in a box and you pick a style and so I learned how to change the style in the middle of a song so that I had two contrasting sections one that was more ethereal sounding you know this you know, like a... <laughs> I was playing it. Okay. And so then I had this section that was more rhythmic, you know, like more, more passionate. So I wanted something, I wanted to create the contrast between the two sections. So I found these two styles. I said, let me try this out. But see now, I had to try to blend with them because there were certain things going on. There's a guitar player playing, you know, these, you know, so the thing is playing with the backing track, when you, same idea as when you're playing with the rim section, you have to listen to them. They have to listen to you now with the backing track, they're not listening to you. So you have to blend with, I had to try to blend with them. I had to try to go with the dynamics of that track, those, what was happening. And this is not easy because, first of all, I'm not high tech, so I'm not putting this into, uh, you know, a mixer and then mixing it later to get the perfect balance. You're just hearing this come out of the speakers into this little camera that I'm using here. So <laughs> forgive me for my lack of technical expertise. I tried to do this last year. I got cameras and mics and everything, and it just created so much complication. I said, I'm going back to the simple simple things. Sometimes the simple things are just the best. But at any rate, I wanted you to understand that I was working with back, the backing track and I wanted you, you know, write to me if you have any questions about it and I'll try to answer whatever I've learned. I will try to pass on to you. But I have learned that you can create two contrasting styles or even more. You might even have three styles within a song and there's a way to do that. You have to know how to program it. So, uh, Write to me and we'll talk about that. Hey, I'm back and we're signing off and I'm back with the glasses and you know, I'm more comfortable now. But you know, maybe we need to, you know, get rid of our hangouts. Maybe that would be a good uh, New Year's resolution. And I'll, you'll probably write to me and say, no, no, keep the glasses on, you'll look better. But anyway, I don't care. Anyway, I'm going to be wishing you a happy New Year. And a Merry Christmas. And also, you know, send me your requests. I'll do Christmas songs. You know, I have done. Please check out my playlist because I have maybe 10 Christmas songs in there that I've already done. I'll put some of them on as return engagement. So until next time, I'll say enjoy the season. And I wish all the best for you in the new year. Signing off. And don't forget, Hermie's still up there. And he's looking down on us. And he's saying... Swing loose, and we'll see you next time around. Bye-bye.